Hey class, we're here to talk about prayer and um, I found an interesting story in the Old Testament, the story of Solomon and how he built a house for the Lord and uh, the way that he prayed about it. In 2 Samuel 7.27, he says, For you, God of Israel, have revealed a word of your, to your servant. Therefore, your servant has found the courage to pray this prayer to you. God revealed his word to Solomon, and in that word, Solomon finds courage to pray to God. God reveals himself to us in salvation. We know who he is. How much more courage should we have to pray prayers to God? In 1 Kings 8, 27 and 28, he says, See, heaven and the heaven of heavens cannot contain you. How much less can this house that I have built? Yet, listen to the cry and to the prayer which your servant prays before you today. He realizes that the house that he has built is not enough, not enough to contain God. Our prayers are so little. They're not enough to contain what God can do. We wouldn't know what to pray if we had to pray big enough to contain God and his power and what he can do in prayer. We are here to pray for little things and to get our hearts in the right place with the will of God. We pray big according to us, but how much bigger is God and how much more can we pray for? How confident can we be in praying these prayers? In 1 Kings 8, 38 and 39 says, Whatever prayer, each knowing the affliction of his own heart and spreading his hands towards this house, then hear in heaven your dwelling place and forgive. The, the affliction of his own heart, each knowing the affliction of his own heart, we pray because we have a heart for it. Whether we have a heart of a broken heart or we have a heart for to see justice to see what god it god's trying to bring our heart to where his heart is so he's gonna do whatever he has to do to get that heart our heart in the right place that's why he says that's what he we know he either is going to answer the prayer or he's going to change our hearts about it he says in 1 Kings 8.54 that Solomon arose from before the altar of the Lord from kneeling on his knees with his hands spread up to heaven. He got up from his prayer and he raised up his hands to heaven to worship him. He knew with confidence that God was going to answer his prayer one way or the other. He will lift up his hands and know God will answer my prayer. 1 Kings 3, 9, his, God says, I have consecrated this house which you build by putting my name there forever, and my eyes and my heart shall be there perpetually. God builds a house inside of us, consecrated us by putting his name in here forever. My eyes and my heart shall be there perpetually. He has his eyes on us. He has put his name on us. He has built a house inside of us. Now we can pray confidently that he will answer. He wants to hear. Then in 2 Kings 25, he says, I have heard your prayer. I have seen your tears. I will heal you. Pray with honesty because he hears us and he sees our tears. He sees the pain, the affliction of our hearts. I will heal you. He will do something to get your heart in the right place and you will be healed. Whether you see the answer to your prayer and your heart gets glad or your heart gets at peace with what he has done. I think the most powerful prayer that God has answered for me is the power of the prayer of forgiveness. He has turned my bitterness my anger and my pain, my hurt, into 
compassion. When he does that, when I can see the people that hurt me with compassion, I know that he has answered a prayer and now I can forgive. Jesus in the cross, at the cross, in the last words that he says, say, for, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they do. That's the way that we get to forgive. Compassion allows us to say, forgive them for they do not know what they do. When we do understand that, we can forgive and God answers that prayer in the way that he wants it to be answered. Thank you guys. Have a good one and keep praying. It's worth it.